the Fall Brothers. I'm Carlos Syme, and it is time for the Lola Olympics. Or the Low Olympics. Sorry, guys, Supercell kind of set me up for that one. <laughs> but first, check out the new Brawlywood loading screen that will become available after Brawloween. Now, Lola is the newest chromatic brawler in the game, and just like Meg, Supercell defines her as a damage dealer. And honestly, that description is actually perfect for her because the amount of damage that she can deal is insane. She's a movie star that's obsessed with the finer things in life and has an ego that's so big, it actually comes to life. Literally, the developers call her mirror self ego. She's a little too full of herself and she'll do anything to be the center of attention. And I have confirmed with Danny that Lola is part of a new trio and Stu is not a Brawlywood brawler. Here are a few of her voice lines, but you can actually wait till the end of the video to hear all of them. Time to steal the show. Oh, poor baby. Say hello to my little friend. Lola's attack, Diamond Eyes. Lola uses the eyes of her fake fox to fire sparkly projectiles at her enemies. It has a medium long range and it shoots in in the shape of like a cone or a fan, similar to like Pam's or Max's attacks. Now, although Lola's reload speed is somewhat slow, the damage from each attack is a lot, so she can take out enemies pretty quickly. Lola's super, megalomaniac. Lola's super is what makes her very unique. She spawns her ego nearby, which is actually a clone of herself that does exactly what she does. Whenever she fires an attack, her ego will also fire in the same direction, and her ego deals just as much damage as she does, but only has half of her health which isn't actually that much. Her ego can't run through walls, and if Lola runs into a wall and continues moving, she'll be able to move her ego in the direction that she is trying to move. Now, if Lola is killed, her ego will be destroyed as well. Also, there can only be one ego alive on the map at a time, which is just like Nita's bear. Now, you might feel like her ego is just an extra brawler, but do not be fooled. It can't be healed, it can't pick up gems or siege bolts, and it cannot get any points for you in hot zone by itself. Now, if you really want to pack a punch, Lola can throw her ego right onto herself or using a corner, she can actually position herself directly on the same spot as her ego. And by doing this, you won't actually have to keep track of both Lola and her ego, and all of her damage will essentially be doubled. However, over time, the placement might get a little mismatched since Lola's ego has a very slightly slower movement speed than Lola does. This also might not be the best way to use her super when she's facing enemies that can deal splash damage. And one interesting use for her super is for Lola to throw it over a wall and control it from the safety of her own wall. This is actually especially useful to do with the help of her gadget. Lola's gadget, freeze frame. When Lola activates her gadget, her ego stops moving for four seconds, but gains a shield that prevents 75 damage of all damage dealt to it. In other words, for those four seconds, it can tank the equivalent of up to 11,200 damage, which is actually really insane. It's kind of like a Frank with his sponge star power, except it won't charge the enemy super and will just waste their ammo. Now, while ego is frozen in place, it will still shoot wherever Lola does, which actually makes this gadget pretty strong. First star power, Improvise. As long as Lola only has one ammo loaded, the next shot she fires will have its power increased by 30%. In other words, if Lola doesn't conserve any of her ammo, she'll get an insane 30% damage boost. Now keep in mind that this star power does not affect Lola's mirror self. Lola's second star power, sealed with a kiss. Now this star power allows Lola's ego to heal her allies 100 health for each projectile that hits them. With each ammo, she can heal up to 600 per brawler, which is actually pretty good. And even though its projectiles do not go through enemy targets, the projectiles do pass through allies after healing them. That makes it possible for her to heal teammates and deal damage to enemies, which is actually pretty crazy. Not to mention the fact that if Lola uses her mirror to attack herself, she can heal herself and her teammates and deal damage to the enemy. Honestly, Lola seems pretty amazing. And we're about to prove to you how amazing she is by comparing her to every other brawler in the game using none other than the Brawl Stars Olympic events. We'll start with her weakest test, then move our way up to her strongest test, which she has a lot of really strong tests. Then I'm going to rank how strong I think she's going to be in each of the different game modes. And a little spoiler alert, <laughs> she's really good. Just a quick reminder to subscribe for more content and use code Kairos in the Brawl Star shop, especially when you purchase this season's Brawl Pass. At the time of me recording this, I'm not at 800,000 subscribers, but I think that by the time this gets released, I will be, so thanks. The Reload Test. Now, it takes Lola 23.2 seconds to completely unload and reload 10 ammo. This ties her with Leon and Bo for 47th out of the 52 brawlers when it comes to just reload speed, which actually shows just how slow her reload speed is. So yeah, while she thrives at dealing damage, you'll have to be very careful about how you use her ammo. The Swarm Test. Now, in this test, I tried separating Lola and her ego so that they could both take out two rows of bots themselves, but because her attacks don't pierce, it actually doesn't matter if they split up, and it is way harder to control her and her mirror 
mirror itself perfectly unless they are standing on the same spot, which is why this is actually the easiest way for Lola to clear the swarm. Lola defeats it in 11.2 seconds, which puts her in 37th place. The area test. Now, Lola's attack is able to clear 21 skulls, and her super at the same time is also able to clear 21 skulls, which gives her a total score of 42 for the area test. This places her in 32nd, which suggests that she'll be about average when it comes to area control. That's probably pretty accurate. However, if you play her right, she might even be better than that. The box test. Now, Lola's biggest issue with the box test is that her projectiles can only hit one box at a time. But as I've mentioned, her main attack is still really strong, which means that after she breaks open a few boxes, she starts to absolutely shred through the rest of them pretty quickly. It takes her 48.9 seconds to clear all 16 boxes, meaning that she takes 31st place. And that suggests that she won't be the best at ramping up in Showdown. However, I think her super is uniquely good at cheesing enemy deaths, so she actually might be better in Showdown than you might think. The race test. Lola is now the 22nd brawler in the game that does not have any abilities to speed her up in any way, along with having just a normal movement speed. So unfortunately, there's nothing special about her in the race test, and she ties with 21 other brawlers for 31st place. The attack range test. Lola's main attack stretches out eight and two third tiles long. It's not a super long range, but it's definitely not the shortest, and it honestly has plenty of range for an attack as strong and as wide as hers. Lola actually ties with Crow, Barley, and Amber for 27th place in this test. We still have more than half of the tests to cover, and Lola's better than more than half of the brawlers in each of them. And in some of the tests, she's literally insane, much like her personality. The super damage test. Lola's super is weird since it only attacks when she attacks, so does it actually attack itself? I don't know for sure, but for the damage test, I decided to measure just one ammo unloaded by the super. It's able to deal 2,352 damage with one attack, which is the 22nd highest damaging super in the game. The supercharge test. Lola requires 15 hits to charge her super, which she can do using 3 ammo. Because her attack takes a bit longer to unload than average, she charges her super in 1.8 seconds, and that's actually exactly as long as it takes for Daryl to charge his super, so Lola ties with him for 22nd place. Now I did want to mention that attacks from her ego also recharge her super, but only half as much as her normal attack does. The 1 second DPS test. I recently did a whole Olympics on this exact test, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you guys go check it out. The goal for this test is for Lola to deal as much damage in one second as possible. We use the tracker in the upper right hand corner of the screen and the highest number is her score. Lola's goal for this is to use her last ammo in conjunction with her first star power to try and deal as much damage as she possibly can. She also uses her ego's attacks as well for double damage. The highest score that she can possibly get is 7,460 damage to the boss, which places her in 18th place. The boss test. Now, even though Brawlers can't start this test with a fully charged super, it does not take long for Lola to charge hers and spawn her ego by her side, which doubles her damage. But that's not all she can do. Thanks to her star power, she gets to further increase her regular attack damage by another 30% the entire time. Lola ends up defeating the boss in 43.6 seconds and ends up taking 15th place. And if she had a faster reload speed, she would easily place in the top 10. The three attack kill test. Lola is able to deal 2,352 damage with a single ammo, but her third ammo gets a 30% damage buff. That means with three ammo, she can deal 7,762 damage, which is enough to three hit kill every brawler in the game other than El Primo and Frank. And she deals more damage if she can unload her last ammo, wait for it to reload, unload it, wait for it to reload, and unload it as well. But that's not how the three attack kill test works. The super range test. Now, technically, if Lola could move, then her super would also be able to move and it would have infinite range, but that's not actually allowed for this test. Lola can throw her super four and two third tiles, but it also gets additional range from her attack. In total, her super reaches 13 and one third tiles from where she is actually standing, which means that she comes in ninth place for the super range test. This is actually just a bit further than what Jessie can do when she throws her turret. The heal test. Now, in this test, Lola is timed on how quickly she can heal Frank for 10,000 HP. Her reload speed is below average, so it takes her 34.4 seconds to do this, which is actually slower than all the brawlers can actually do in this test. But there are only five of them that can do this test, and she actually takes twice as long as Terra, who actually takes fourth. She's not actually very good at this test, but she can heal and deal damage, which is something that not very many brawlers can do. The survival test. Now, Lola uses her second star power so that her ego can heal herself 600 health every time she reloads. Now, her reload speed is slower than the sniper's bot, but she's able to stay alive for a very long time. 
Just before she reloads that final shot, the sniper bot ends up taking her out, but she's able to survive for 58.8 seconds and takes fifth place, which is actually pretty insane. The assassin test. Now Lola's able to unload all three of her shots in under three seconds, but she can't reload fast enough to get a fourth shot off. However, with her and her ego firing all three of their shots at the same time with the extra damage boost thanks to Lola's improved star power, she hits the boss with 36 projectiles that each deal a ton of damage. In just three seconds, she's able to deal 14,814 damage to the boss, which puts her in fourth place for this test, which is actually insane because this is not an unlikely situation in an actual match. The dive test. Now this takes a little bit of practice, but Lola can get close enough to the turret so that both she and her ego are able to hit all of their projectiles before the Ike turret takes her out. Once her ego's on the battlefield, she activates her freeze frame gadget and her ego tanks enough damage for Lola to fire six shots at the turret before it takes her out. Before dying, Lola's able to deal 20,000 damage to the turret, which is enough for her to take out over half of its health. This is proof that if you play her right, she is going to be an excellent diver in Siege, and she's going to be really good in high pressure situations. But now we have her best test, which completely blows all of the other brawlers out of the park. The level 25 Siege Bot Test. Now Lola uses her gadget to enable her ego to tank several shots from the boss and deal tons of damage to it while her shield is up. Her improvised star power adds a lot of extra damage in this test, and by the time the bot gets to the Ike turret, it only hits it three three times before getting defeated. I probably could have even tanked two of those shots based off of Lola's remaining health if I did this perfectly, but this is still an insane amount of damage, and Lola is able to get first place with 85% of the turret's health remaining against a level 25 siege bot, which is just insane, which makes sense because she's insane. And now I want to talk about how insane she is in all the different game modes. Then I'm actually going to tell you exactly what you need to know to get Cat Burglar Jesse for free. I think Lola's going to be A tier in gem grab. Whether she uses her ego to support one of her teammates or just to double up her power, which is a very great way to use her, I think she's going to be a great brawler at carrying gems to hang out in the middle of the map. She also has enough health to escape from most surprise attacks, and she's able to heal whoever she needs to with her second star power. Plus, she has enough range to trade shots with most other brawlers that are actually pretty good in gem grab. I think she's going to be A tier in Brawl Ball. Close range combat is almost inevitable in Brawl Ball and Lola deals plenty of damage at close range. I can see her using her ego to tank a few shots or even more with her gadget so that she can then get easy goals. And another perk is that her ego will actually attack whenever Lola shoots the ball. So in a way, kicking the ball actually doesn't waste her ammo. Now I think Heist actually really depends on which map she's playing on, but generally I'd say she's B tier. With the help of her ego and and her first star power equipped, you do not want to leave her alone on your safe. But that being said, she doesn't have a lot of range, which means that she's going to struggle against a lot of the top tier high sprawlers. And she has such a slow reload speed that if she doesn't have her super, she is going to lose in a base race. Now, Lula is absolutely an S tier brawler for Siege, in my opinion. She is literally one of the best brawlers against the Ike turret, and she is the best brawler against the enemy boss, which is justification enough for her to be in the S tier for Siege because she's amazing on offense, she's amazing on defense. Now, she might not be the best at actually collecting bolts, but she's definitely not bad at it. As long as she saves her super for important moments, she's going to be really difficult to defeat in Siege. Now, for Bounty, I put her in the B tier. Her stats are good for a really all-around brawler, but she just doesn't have the range or the ability to be really great in Bounty. Maybe highly skilled players will be able to use her ego offensively and throw it forward and go safely for kills, but even that seems really tough to do. I think Lola is going to do exceptionally well in Hot Zone. Her second star power is in incredible for healing Lola and her teammates, all while keeping enemies away from the zone. And on maps where the two zones are split, she'll actually be able to send her ego off to help out other zones while she's defending her own area. Obviously, that's going to take a lot of multitasking and a lot of skill, but I'm really excited to see the strategies that people come up with because I think she's going to dominate this game mode. I think Lola is going to be B tier in Knockout. Her damage output alone will make her a decent option, but she doesn't have any really special abilities that allow her to become an S tier brawler or or actually to deal with the S tier brawlers for this mode. So I think B tier is a pretty safe place for her. I'm also putting her in the B tier for showdown. She did a little worse than average in the box test, and I don't think she's gonna really struggle at getting power ups, but she has such a slow reload speed that if she's not able to take out an enemy brawler in the three ammo that she has, she's really going to struggle a lot. Now duo showdown, she'll get a little bit more value because of her second star power, which will heal her and her teammate while also allowing her to deal damage to the enemies. And duo showdown's a little bit more about control, which she's actually pretty good at. Now, 
let's talk about everything you need to know to get Cat Burglar Jesse and the other rewards by watching the World Championship. The idea behind this is that Supercell is going to create a website where you will be able to log in using your Supercell ID. On that site, you'll be able to predict which teams will win each round, predict the MVP of each round, and cheer on the team that you win. Doing all of these things will actually reward you with points, and if you predict things correctly, you'll get additional points which will all go toward you collecting special things on your Brawl Stars account. These include coins, star points, three new pins for this year, and then of course, Cat Burglar Jesse. Now all these will be available for purchase at a later date, but you guys are definitely not gonna wanna miss the championship on the 26th through the 28th. Now this sneak peek is done, but for those of you guys that want to see all of Lola's pins and hear all of her voice lines, I'm going to let them play after this video is done. Well, actually it's gonna start right now. So don't forget to subscribe for more Brawl Stars content, and I would really appreciate you guys using Code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. It supports the development of all the videos on my channel, plus it helps support me, my wife, and my two kids. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in the next Brawl Stars video. But I'm the star! I will be back in the limelight. You haven't seen the last of me. The show needs me. Oh, so I'm a joke to you? How rude. Don't you know who I am? Excuse me. How dare you? Oops. Sometimes a lady has to be the bad guy. Exit stage right. No one outshines the diva. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> oh, honey, don't you wish you were me? Ready for my close-up? Who wants an autograph? I'm an icon, a legend, and the moment. Look at the eyes, Chico. They never lie. Ready to shine. Hola, darlings. Roll out the red carpet. Say hello to my little friend. Glitz and glamour. Double trouble. Time to steal the show. <laughs>